most businesses today face two major marketing challenges. One, people are overloaded by information. We're talking about four and a half billion pieces of new content every day. And two, people have much shorter attention spans and spend only about eight seconds on anything before they jump on to the next thing. It's no wonder that companies are struggling to get their message heard. The result of poor marketing communications is that half of all new business ventures fail in their first four years, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. With this in mind, Visual Storytelling Institute co-founders Shlomi Ron and Alex Caravallo asked themselves, how can businesses connect more powerfully with audiences? Welcome to Visual Storytelling Today. This is your number one source for the latest and most effective business marketing strategies you can apply today to rise above the noise. From video and infographics to augmented and virtual reality, join us every month to meet notable visual storytellers and discover their marketing insights and stories. Here's your host, Shlomi Ron. Hi, my name is Shlomi Ron. I'm a, the co-founder at the Visual Storytelling Institute. Uh, we're based here in sunny Miami, Florida. Uh, we are actually the only visual marketing think tank that uh, combines the power of uh, storytelling with the effectiveness of visual media. Uh, we help you, the marketer, the entrepreneur, to rise above the communication noise with personalized visual storytelling workshops. Uh, and we do that uh, using our signature nine-step My Visual Story framework. So you can connect better with your audience, empower their lives, and grow your company. Today, I'm super excited uh, to have a, a fantastic guest on our show. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, when you look at uh, the stats, uh, at least according to Cisco, uh, video is expected to make up to 80% of internet traffic by 2019. <clears throat> so video has become a, a dominant tactic in marketers' toolbox, uh, pretty much for every stage in the buyer's journey. So when you think about it, video is, is really the most accessible visual medium today that lets uh, your audience reenact real life events, but remotely. So with that, I'm so excited to have uh, on our show one of the top experts in the B2B video storytelling space, uh, Tyler Lassard. He is the VP of Marketing at Vidyard. Welcome to the show, Tyler. Great, thank you, Shlomi. A real pleasure to be here. Um, love having uh, love having me on. I really appreciate it, and and I really loved your introduction and the point of of using visual storytelling, visual marketing as a way to uh, you know stand out from the noise and uh, you know connect with mar with uh, audiences today because it's for me. I <clears throat> come from the B two B world, and it's. Yep equally if not more important in B2B today as it is in B2C. So, uh, so love that angle and, uh, and really excited to be here. Yeah, so no, this is something that we are constantly uh, evangelizing uh, in any platform we make that you know, the story, you start with the story and the visual comes after, so we gotta have a strong story. So speaking about story, I'm kind of curious, uh, how did you get started in video marketing? What is your backstory? <laughs> yeah, my uh, my backstory is uh, is a little bit unconventional in in this space. So I actually started off as an engineer. Uh, I went to University of Waterloo's systems design engineering graduate. Uh, I started off in software. Uh, I was a software developer when I came out of school, and um, slowly migrated more towards working with a community of developers uh, more in the support capacity as well in the evangelism capacity. And what I learned early on was. I was an okay coder, but not great. Um, mm -hmm. But what I was better at was working with others to help them understand you know, how to overcome challenges and how to use the technology to create value. And I very quickly found myself much more in like a product marketing role where I was also helping our own teams understand what kinds of APIs and services do we need to build to help the developers do what they wanted to do. And, um, and actually, that was my very early uh, exposure to this, this art of storytelling where, mm -hmm. you know, I would go out and evangelize to the developer community. And this was at BlackBerry, actually, in the early days of, of mobile apps. This yeah, was I was like, about to ask if you were connected to BlackBerry, because the moment you said Waterloo, it's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was uh, I was supporting mobile app developers before apps were apps. This was back in you know 2001, 2002, um, you know when it was like the first mobile web browsers and things like that. And uh, 
you know, a lot of that job was out there evangelizing in the community, helping them understand the opportunity on mobile, um, you know, how to build a distinctive application that delivered unique value. And, uh, and I really was drawn to that notion of, of telling those stories to, to show people, here's the art of the possible with what you can do today and the kinds of value you can bring into the market. And, uh, and of course, the features and functions supported that, but I, I really thrived on that. And, and many years later, here I am, I continued to move over to the, the side of marketing. And a lot of that honestly was fueled by uh, my love of, of storytelling and of engaging audiences in, uh, in interesting conversations. This is fascinating. So in essence, you come from a very technical background and you did a switch to more kind of a business marketing uh, in essence is that right yeah yeah absolutely and uh and, and i'm a better man for it i must say i, I really uh <laughs> i really i really enjoy where i am today and, and a lot of it comes from the um again it's both the storytelling as well mm -hmm. as focusing on that audience empathy and and really mm -hmm. you know trying to understand what are what are people trying to accomplish again what is that art of the possible and how do we help them get there? How do we communicate a story to them that helps them get there? And just so happens in the world of tech, I felt I was pretty good at doing that by translating the possibilities of the technology into the art of what you could do with it. Um, and so I love this world of, of B2B, but also specifically B2B tech, where you, you, know, you can sort of get a good understanding of the value and capabilities of the technology, but explain it in ways that are all about the value to an audience or uh, to-, sure. to no, for sure. So that brings up uh, another question that we keep asking our guests. Uh, you know, how would you define visual storytelling? Obviously, you know, it's a new label for a, mm -hmm. a methodology that the cavemen uh, already applied uh, on their cave wall, right? Right. You know, with I think the, the big changes, obviously, is the, the emergence of social media, mobile, uh, uh, and the need to produce and consume so how would you in your world how would you define visual storytelling and if also if you can relate to a subcategory which is a, our topic for today b2b video storytelling yeah so i mean you know visual storytelling to me is is really all about you know how do we convey messages how do we convey ideas how do we engage audiences through you know means of uh, I mean, different modes of communication, different modes of messaging, and ultimately storytelling, um, but in a way that is is visually engaging, and most importantly about that is emotionally stimulating. And I think that's a big part to creating visual experiences. Yep. Is it goes way beyond you know traditional text based to um, to, to to provide a heck of a lot more information. Um, and greater value information in a shorter period of time, um, but to also stimulate different emotions which help us with memorability of content and processing of information and association and relevance and all those kinds of things that, mm -hmm. that, that, that fall short with text. And if you put the B2B slant on it, what's, what's interesting in the, the B2B world, you know, there is this renaissance happening of everybody moving from, you know, text-based descriptions of features and functions to more visual storytelling about value and benefits and, and um, uh, you know, what you can help companies achieve in pains and gains. And, and what I find interesting about, you know, storytelling and visual storytelling in B2B is, you know, A, there's a big opportunity there to connect with people in, in, in ways that salespeople always have, which is emotional and personal. Right. Um, but also in B2B, it's, it's very different from the consumer world, where in the consumer world, a lot of visual storytelling is about entertainment. Right. Mm -hmm. um, in B2B, uh, it, it can be entertaining, but that's not the purpose of people seeking out your information. Right. People are coming to you for education primarily. Right. Whether it's to understand the art of the possible or to understand what you do as a business or how you do it. And so storytelling takes a bit of a different twist in the world of B2B where, yeah, it's great to entertain. But the most important thing is that you are delivering high value information in a way that people can understand, in a way that people can relate back to their own personal and business lives, and in a way that drives action to the next step you're trying to take, which of course, you know, as a business, you're typically trying to move people down that buyer's journey. Um, so again, I think very different, you know, thinking has to go into it of, of what is the end goal of the information you're trying to deliver and how can I use a visual medium to educate and to, you know, convince and convert an audience member. Yeah, and I think also, uh, to your point, uh, there's a lot of uh, probably misconception in the marketplace that market think that uh, when you deal with B2B, it's got to be super cold, uh, kind of a uh, impersonal uh, interaction right. where, you know, this whole movement of H2H, -H, you know, human to human, <laughs> is yeah. really tried to kind of disprove that and, and kind of, as you said, 
focus more on, on the personality of that CMO, that uh, decision maker that needs yeah. to, to make an informed decision. And in the process, as you said, really providing educational value, but it's part of a, you know, a bigger narrative. It's not just uh, brought to you as a sales message. Well, what, you know, what's really interesting that's happened is if you, if you flip and you look at the, the consumer B2C world, mm-hmm. um, you know, in, the, in the consumer B2C world, marketers effectively had the job of selling. Right. You had to it, you were the one building demand and people would go out and buy it. Right. There was no the human one to one sale was just usually taking the transaction. Right. But but yep. they had to they had to sell you. They had to get you to want to buy that product. And right. in the B2B world, because we have direct sales teams who are handling one to one sales, marketing was typically viewed as, oh, your job is to build awareness yep. and to support our sales team. And our sales team are the, the real heroes of the company. And they're the ones who are going to engage. They're the ones who are going to tell the story who are going to connect yeah, the closers they're yep. going to, and, and then they're going to close right yep. and what's happened of course over the last you know 5 10 15 years is you know with the new digital buying journeys that's totally changed and now you know we've all seen the stats of you know buyers typically do about 80 percent of the buyer's journey by themselves mm-hmm. online before they engage with a sales rep and they're usually already down to maybe two or three possible solutions before they even reach out to a sales rep. And so our job as B2B marketers is very different from what it was 10, 15 years ago. It's not just about top of funnel awareness. We actually have to do what sales teams did for a long time, Mm -hmm. which was, again, build that personal rapport, educate those audience members, get them excited about what we do, get them interested in us as a brand, and then, again, get sales involved to help move that deal forward. But we're as responsible now, I think, for selling as we are for marketing. And I think that's where storytelling becomes so important because we can't rely on a one-to-one sales rep um, to you know tell a story and to connect personally we've got to do that as marketers now absolutely yeah so looking at uh, 2018 that it's coming up uh, and I'm sure you know some of the marketers listening right now or watching uh, are you know looking to uh, revamp their 2018 strategy and obviously video is a is an important mm-hmm. component for those who kind of still on the sideline or did some work in video. What would you say? Uh, why video is, is so vital in crafting a business story or your video storytelling strategy? Yeah, I mean, we we continue to see from you know market trends, stats, talking to companies, you know, all sources of data that we see point to the fact that video, um, you know, helps to generate better conversions all throughout the buyer's journey. And and honestly, it's as simple as that. If you're not using video as part of your awareness building and top of funnel programs, if you're not using it, um, you know, mid funnel in nurture cycles to educate audiences and to connect with them, if you're not using it late in the buyer's journey for things yeah. like you know customer testimonials, things like that, you're missing a piece of your arsenal that could very well, um, you know, boost your conversions and and help you generate more business. And so it's, Mm -hmm. you know, the risk is really, you know, of of not using it and what what that, uh, what that could mean. Um, But I think for a lot of people, it's, you know, we're at the point now where, yeah, a lot of people get it and they know, yeah, video is an important part of my mix. But, you know, how do I how do I do it and how do I do it effectively? And, and that's the biggest challenge we're seeing with most companies. And they're trying to understand where does it best fit in that buyer's journey? Where can I get the biggest bang for my buck? And how do I need to change my approach to content to embrace video as a storytelling medium and a visual medium, not just as a different way to tell the same story? And that's that's something that, that I try to educate a lot of people on is videos in B2B isn't just a different way to tell the same story you've been telling it's a way to tell a new, bigger, bolder story, right? It's a way to, you know, use, people have to think about how do I use the medium to its advantage, right? Again, as a visual medium, it gives you these opportunities to be more personal, to be more Mm -hmm. human, um, to instill, you know, laughter or inspiration or more human stories um, into our mix. And so a lot of B2B marketers, that's, that's kind of where I'm at is, is helping them understand there is a bit of a change of mindset you have to think about. And, and the old content types are still important. But as you think about where does video play, you know, it's all through the buyer's journey. It's across all your different programs, your email marketing, your advertising, your nurture programs, your sales enablement, your website. It's part of all of those. But, you know, how are you going to use it to its advantage? How are you going to take advantage of this unique medium to create more interest from people to redefine how they think about your brand right. compared to what you do with, you know, text-based content with infographics and other things? Yeah. So one of the things that I really liked uh, that you, 
you did it, the uh, the chalk talk series that mm -hmm. uh, you kind of it's a fantastic very simple way that's kind of borrows from a the world of uh, the classroom and it's very uh, accessible and uh, the illustrations really makes uh, the information super clear and uh, i think that it's a great example maybe if you kind of uh, use that uh, <laughs> uh, vision of the chalk talk series and kind of paint a picture if for marketers in the audience here when you look at the buyer's journey and this is something that i picked up from your chalk talk series is mm -hmm. what would you say like uh, on a very broad strokes are the business objectives that tie to each stage in the buyer's journey from the awareness uh, you know mid funnel and bottom of funnel just so we can paint a picture of how video is a uh, adapting itself yeah yeah um so you know the so i kind of think of it as as three main stages to, to mm -hmm. simplify things so you've got the interest and awareness stage and that's where of course you're doing broader outreach you might probably have more dependence on things like social and third-party channels as well as your yep. blog for driving inbound this is about engaging new audiences and to your earlier point standing out making them want to take notice and and lean into your message and and this is where using video Almost in the B2B world, I almost think about it as, as our version of like mini online commercials, right? And it's about, um, you know, using it to build interest in perhaps a theme or a topic that we're talking about. It might be in a specific, um, you know, resource or, or other video or ebook that we've launched, right? So we'll often do this where, you know, we do a few research reports throughout the year that we'll publish. And mm -hmm. a big part of our attraction and interest is promoting those reports and also producing little videos to as ways to promote them. And we often, not surprisingly, see more engagement through the videos than just going out and saying, check out this great research report, right? And the videos might just be 30 second, 20 second social clips highlighting a few of the key stats and then the call to action to check out the full report. And what type of videos are you using? Is it like just talking heads or is it like dramatized narrative or what it is? What is it? Yes, 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 and yes. I mean, we, uh, <laughs> I think what's what's interesting and, and you know, we're trying to, to, to live this here and we see a lot of companies living it is that you know a you've got to try different things um, yeah. with video um, you know B there's never a one-size-fits-all it's just like with other content um, mm -hmm. different people are going to gravitate towards different styles different narratives yeah. um, but also um, you have to set yourself up to be able to, to do these things at scale without you know a huge budget and so you mentioned like what kinds well we have um, you know two in-house video producers in our team I feel very lucky and blessed for that yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and but you know we're a relatively small company but we have an in-house producer and uh, uh, you know, he will, you know, for that, he's adept at creating quick motion graphic videos. And those, you know, those are kind of neat for, for research reports where you can do some graphics to pop up different stats. Um, we'll also do kind of talking head style. Sometimes I'll just grab like, a, I'll stand in front of a whiteboard or a chalkboard and I'll write some of the key findings and yep. you'll record me to talking about it. And in other times we'll do a quick little narrative style, maybe a skit that that's more humor based, right? So it's like poking fun at one of the key pain points that the research report focuses on. And so maybe you'll see somebody like really frustrated and then there'll be, you know, some sort of fun cut in it and somebody else who's being successful and there's humor in, in, uh, in, in sort of the paradox between these two. Anyway, so the, the, the long story short is, is we'll do all of those in house with our video producer and our own, you know, employees as actors. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Sure. Um, but, but we'll try each of them. And, and again, they all have their own place. And, and also they have their different place on different channels. We find on things like Twitter, the quick motion graphic videos tend to do better. On Facebook, the kind of humanized conversation works better. Um, and then the, the sort of skit-based ones tend to work well in our email marketing campaigns for people who may already be familiar with our brand, but now like, you know, they're like, oh great, I've got an opportunity to laugh. And then they laugh and then they go, actually this sounds interesting and they lean into it. So again, different styles uh, may work on different channels. And so we find experimenting is, uh, is really important. But from your experimentation, and I'm sure, you know, it's probably going to be super uh, subjective uh, yeah. in each business. You got to test it and then and see what works. But did you find any kind of a general uh, rules of thumb that uh, certain styles work specifically for awareness stage versus mid and bottom? Yeah, I think at the um, so at the at the at the higher level awareness stage, I think live action tends to generally work better, and things that are again a bit more 
uh, personal and a bit more, um, we find entertainment works really well in our market. And, mm -hmm. and so we try to do, you know, some great top of funnel videos that, um, you know, pique people's interest, hopefully get them to laugh, make them want to share it. But then, you know, it kind of breaks down that barrier of that B2B kind of formal uh, block. And, um, and, and it really helps instill the, the humanity of, of who we are and, and what we do. Sure. And, and I think that goes a long way in building that relationship. So I often find that works well at top of the funnel. Mm -hmm. And then and um, things like motion graphic tend to work really well at that next stage of early education. So now, great, people are aware of you, but, you know, quick animated videos as explainers on your website, again, as ways to promote specific mm -hmm. reports or webinars or things that you want to re-engage somebody with, yeah. um, you know, they can work really well because now they're, they can be really informational very quickly with the way that you can cut them. And, and you have longer, a, a larger bandwidth to basically deliver more information. You're not really limited. That's right. Yeah. And you can start to get a little bit longer. And then um, and then as you move into sort of heavier education, I think that's where a mix of content types works really well. So both, um, uh, you know, customer testimonial videos, so getting customers telling their stories on camera, um, things like whiteboard videos and chalk talks. I'll just um, I'll just quickly pop up here if I uh, if I can. I'll, I'll see if this works. Um, our, uh, our chalk talk videos that you mentioned and, and what, what I find really interesting about this. So here's a, a hub that we've got and um, each week we launch these different, um, they're called chalk talks and yeah. you can see here, we've got different categories and, and there's a number of these that we've created and um, they're very educational. They're each yeah. about, you know, five to 10 minutes in length. And I find what's really interesting about these is um, uh, most importantly, they're very quick and easy to do, right? So we do these just in house, we got a camera on a tripod, some lighting, um, and we drop idea. the chalkboard. Yeah, and, and just the visual nature of the chalkboard gives, um, I think, gives it a much more appeal than, you know, me walking through some slides or, or things like yeah. that. And so it's it's become really effective. And um, but again, something we can create weekly uh, with no incremental budget and the amount of time it takes to create it and produce it is about the same time as it would take to write a blog post each week. And so um, it's, it's a different way and it's worked really, really well for us, um, both for drawing people in as well as as a tool for education and, and nurturing. Yeah, I think really what works here is a, you know, the first, the, the platform is very uh, familiar to the audience. You know, they feel like they're in a classroom. Mm -hmm. The information is super uh, visual. So it, it, it always goes into uh, what we also do, do in our consulting. Uh, Sometimes uh, it's called real-time visual story. So basically... Yep instead of a presenter just going through PowerPoints, there is an illustrator that actually draw. Right, I love that, story. yeah. So this is ex the same thing, obviously, you're don't, not doing it in real time, but you know, the flow of the discussion allows uh, people to really follow the different elements uh, of uh, the conversation. So I think this is a great way to uh, get people to learn simple uh, B2B video storytelling principles fairly quickly Mm -hmm. and, and try it uh, themselves uh, so th this is something that you know i really enjoyed watching a few episodes <laughs> yeah yeah and you know the, the thing that i've really been um, been happy about with it is is both it, it is a great means of sort of you know inbound leads and, and again for nurturing our audience but yeah. it's also become our um our number one kind of content type and series for our sales team um, using uh, in one-to-one -one conversations with prospects. And so I, I hear it, I mean, literally weekly and, and sometimes, you know, daily where I get a note from somebody from our sales team saying, you know, thanking me for, uh, cause I produced a lot of them. And so, uh, you know, they'll be like, thanks so much for doing that chalk talk on, you know, topic A, B, or C. Uh, I just had a customer ask about that. And instead of writing a big long email, I just sent them to that chalk talk and said, here, quick watch this. And, um, and, and that's where a lot of the, actually, that's where a lot of the ideas come from as well, is right from our sales team, where it's like, what questions are people asking you that you find you have to answer repeatedly? Or what obstacles are, are they coming up against? Or what are some, you know, roadblocks customers are asking about? And let's do a visual chalk talk to answer that question. We publish it on our blog, but then our sales team uses it all the time in customer conversations. Right. And, um, and, and that to me is a sign of a, a good piece of marketing content when your sales team actually thanks you for it, uh, which is, <laughs> to me, was like one of those great moments. You're like, all right, we got, to, you know, sales is, uh, is on board and they're using it. So, uh, so, yeah, again, I think a great example. And, and they love that format. And we hear that again from people of, you know, instead of a, a written long blog post, this, you know, short format video um, and I've, I've even had customers who have pinged me and, and, and again said thanks for the content but they've also said they printed out you know screenshots of the chalkboard and just put them up uh, you know in their queue because it's a quick 
reminder. Reminder, of, yeah. In one quick visual, just like an infographic would be, which I think is, is part of the power as well. Yeah, and I think it also kind of indicates a kind of transition of a lot of companies today uh, from becoming like the traditional uh, B2B that focus on a specific function they provide. Right. To, transforming themselves into a, what I call media companies because Absolutely. content and within this media world, it's also, you start seeing that uh, emergence and you are probably the best example of that, of uh, becoming sort of like a educational uh, organization where you lead first by providing educational value. And once people get, you know, the, the value, then they consider, you know, Hey, these guys also have a video platform we might yeah. want to check out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's a, it's a big part, I think, for a lot of B2B companies now and is that, is that war for mindshare. And it's, it's back to that very first point of, of cutting through the noise and getting people's right. attention because it's, um, it's harder than ever, right? We've, we've really democratized the use of yep. social media, of blogs, of content, right? And, and we've gone from it being a premium to it being... Uh, just everywhere, and and the currency is no longer content, right? The currency is 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 attention, and so we've got to you know we've got to think of neat ways to do that, um, and to kind of refuel some of our inbound strategies and, and things like this of, of how we educate the market. Um, a lot of this is also driven by you know our by SEO keyword strategies, right? So what are some of the things that people are searching for, and again, how can we create uh, a visual piece or a video or a narrative around that specific topic and. Um, I was actually um, uh, doing a podcast with somebody from Schneider Electric uh, just mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they had a very similar story where they built out a um, uh, kind of an energy university uh, where it was, again, a lot of the content and videos they had been building up over a period of time, and then they repurposed them all as this kind of educational university where you could come in, register, and, um, and they, within like, you know, 18 months or so, they had like hundreds of thousands of registrations into this educational curriculum, um, which again, it became, I think, one of their, their top lead sources. You know, a lot of people were just there, were never going to be buyers, but there were certainly quite a few that ended up converting into opportunities. And, and it's, it's, again, I think a great story of, you know, how as, as marketers, we need to start by providing value to our audience, to, to educate them, to, 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 to deliver true value, not just value of here's what we Absolutely. do, but answering the questions they're trying to answer um, and then build that trust um, and again doing it through video also helps build trust which is a whole other topic we can talk about and then um, uh, and then you know working them through and, and like you said we're going to be top of mind um, when they think about a video solution yeah no this is so true so so when you know we have marketers in the audience right now that are considering yeah 2018 I'd like to start uh, my video marketing strategy so can you give us like a walk through, you know, how they can get started, how, what business objective they should set and what KPI they should, uh, uh, you know, consider? Yep. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you asked it that way because the answer is don't do video just for the sake of doing video yep. uh, because it will fail. Um, because, you know, if you don't have the ability to match it back to your business goals and metrics, then uh, it's mm -hmm. all for naught. So um, I always encourage people start with, you know, if you're going into a new year like 2018, um, you know, what are some of the big priorities within your business? And for a lot of people, it might be I need more leads. Some it might be I need better conversion rates and, and better performance of my engagement and nurtures with existing prospects. Some of it might be we need to, you know, increase our close rate and help our sales team be more effective. There are different goals you might have. Have. And, um, you know, try to align where you're going to create video to some of those top priorities so it can, you know, have the bigger bang um, for, for the buck. Um, so, you know, first of all, think about that. So pick one or two spots in your priority stack to say, yep, these are ones where video could really help to, to mm -hmm increase in uh, performance. Um, so I think that's one angle. The second angle that I, I just encourage everybody is just start on your website. Like I still, mm -hmm. you know, most people, you Go to your own website if you're if you're listening to this, watching this right now. I, here's my challenge, right? Go to your website, go through the different pages of your site, and you know, and then close your browser and think about it for a minute, and then and then ask yourself, how did that really make you feel going through your own website, right? Like, did it, it was it informational? Probably, right? Most websites do a great job of of information, sometimes too much. Right. Um, 
but how did it make you feel, right? Like, did you walk away going like, wow, I'm, I'm like, I'd be excited to work with this company or, or get a friend or a colleague or a spouse to do it, right? Go to go through your website and say, but don't ask them, what did you learn? Ask them, how do you feel walking away from that? And I think that's where, again, you know, video and visual storytelling has such a big impact and, and think about on your customer page, are there customers telling their stories on camera to get you excited, right? Um, are there those like emotional, I call them the fizz moments where you feel the fizziness inside when you're like, you know, you're really touched by a piece of content. Um, you know, is do you feel more connected to that brand because maybe you've actually interacted with people from that company in their videos? So I think those are those are the two things I often encourage. One is what challenges are you facing that where video could really help? And second is your website and where could video help to boost the personality of your brand, but also ultimately increase conversion rates on your website to whatever it is you're trying to convert people to. It might be request a demo, it might be sign up for something, whatever it is. And, and do you have any kind of a success criteria that uh, people should watch for? It's um, so the ultimate success criteria is always back to what were the goals of that video, uh -huh. um, which in most cases, it's, it's probably for a B2B marketer, it's probably leads and pipeline and revenue. Yeah. Um, but that stuff can be tough to, to measure, especially in the uh, in the near term. And so some of the leading indicators um, are, you know, if it's content on your website, um, a, are you, you know, seeing high engagement in the video itself? So track the actual engagement in the asset, not just number of views, but are people staying past halfway or towards the end? Um, is time on that page increasing as a result of that video? Are conversion rates on that page increasing as a result of that video? So don't just think about the video itself. Think about what's the program or asset or page or whatever it is that's tied to, and is that performing better? Um, look at your email marketing, right? So if you're doing email nurtures or email marketing, try adding in some short videos into those and do those email campaigns perform better than others. Even so though I think a lot of that, video in email is, is kind of challenging, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, what most um, market B2B marketers do is it's about embedding a thumbnail image, um, you know, a nice big juicy thumbnail image, which when click takes you to the page to watch the video. Yeah. Um, and you can do things like animated GIFs to make it at least look like a video and things like that. So, so those things tend to work in, in B2B. Uh, but that's again where I think, don't think about, you know, how can this video on its own be successful? Think about where can I have the biggest impact, which programs, and is using video helping to contribute to those uh, results of those different programs. Interesting. Yeah, no, this is definitely things that uh, every market could watch for, and especially when you start fresh with the, obviously what we keep uh, preaching in our workshop is that you got to first define your meta story. What is the overarching business narrative that you're trying to mm -hmm. accomplish and then use video. This is uh, falling under our story visualizing phase mini stories that support your overall uh, business story and this is something that uh, is really coming from a real life events things that uh, really happened and we also like to say that any great visual story is a uh, in essence uh, fun functions like a mirror yep. because once your audience can see themselves in your story and specifically see their problem in your story the story stops becoming yours and it becomes their story. So your challenge is really making that video, that infographic, whatever visual narrative you choose, uh, reflect the problem your audience is trying to, to solve. So it's not about you. you just yep. the, the guiding, uh, the trusted advisor here. It's all about the customer playing the hero. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I couldn't have said it better. And uh, the, the last thing I'll say on that is I find focusing, at least in B2B, um, focusing on the pain of your audience rather than the gain you're going to give them is often a much better approach. And, you know, we always as marketers, we like to go back to, oh, here's all the great things you could do with our solution. But yep. people aren't trying to inherently, they're not looking for something new. Um, and they can't, it's hard for them to relate to that, but they can very quickly relate to solving a pain or a problem that they have today. And so I think put yourself in that mindset when you think about what is your narrative and how can videos help to, to peel back that narrative. It's what are the pains my audience might be yeah. feeling and how can we bring that to life and help them relate to that pain. And then if, if you get them, great, then you can educate them further, but start with the pain, not the gain, and, and you'll often see better results. One thing kind of related to this, you mentioned narrative styles. What are your thoughts on a really, in terms of video storytelling techniques? Obviously, we are, I would say, like uh, 
almost a generation of advertising history that uh, is leveraging what is known as inadequacy marketing, you know, based on fear, creating fear mm. with the audience. Right. <laughs> Unless you buy our product, you know, you're going to feel weakened. Right. And, and on the flip side, we have uh, what we know as the empowering marketing, like brands from Apple, Nike, that kind of uh, in all their messages try to imp empower the, their audience. So where do you see the balance between those two disciplines in your narrative style? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, both have their, I think both have their place. And, you know, it, it depends in some cases, I think, on the market, on the company, on your position within the market, kind of where you're coming from, uh, from a competitive landscape. So I, I don't think there's necessarily one answer that is is mm -hmm. correct for everybody. I know in our business, I can I can give you perspective of, you know, our, a big focus for us, uh, we're in an emerging market. And, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of education to be done to help people understand again, the art of the possible of what you can do with somebody right. like, like Vidyard, they're not coming looking for it, right? They're not looking, like in the case of Apple, people are looking for, you know, uh, a laptop, they're looking for a smartphone, yeah. right? So they're, they're in, a, in, in a pull market. And so they can be more aspirational because they're not trying to build or fuel the demand. They're trying so to serve right it. So high. Right? And so, and, and, but in our case, um, we're doing more to build an emerging market. And mm -hmm. so we can't uh, sort of rely on just purely, hey, here's all the wonderful things you can do with us because people are coming and looking for it. And so that's where things like, you know, we focused a lot more on things like Chalk Talks and other things that are much more educational um, to help build the market. Um, and, and there's a little bit of fear uh, in that we have to instill the fear of, it's almost the fear of missing out in our case. It is, if you don't embrace this, and you don't, you know, use a tool like ours, you know, wh wh where are you going to be two, three years from now? Three and stages. to help sort of peel that back. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a delicate balance. Um, mm -hmm. We do a bit of both. We certainly do sort of inspirational and aspirational positioning, um, you know, but a lot more of it is, is, is purely educational, which I think is actually a little bit different from the other two. And it's, it's really about seeding those ideas in the market and building the demand for, for what we do. So again, I think it really depends. You have to understand your market and know, What's the maturity of the market? What are the questions people are asking? Is it a push or pull market? And, and those things might uh, sway sort of how you tell your story. Yeah, I really like this, uh, your comment about this because as you said, you know, the brand equity is, of Apple is much higher. So it, it, it's much easier for them to play on empowerment than when you're completely unknown. Mm -hmm. And actually I use in our workshops uh, the example of uh, your buddies uh, from Terminus that mm -hmm. really, you know, had a commodity platform, basically B two B account based marketing, but uh, instead of you know waving the flag of their platform, which was a commodity, they focused on the problem, and and by focusing on the problem, you know that whole flip my funnel movement emerged, and all of a sudden they become more authoritative and trustworthy. So, yeah, exercise we see it uh, a lot in market. Uh, so one thing that probably now could bring this uh, uh, the importance of video storytelling home, maybe if you can give us uh, you know one or two examples of uh, good uh, video storytelling use cases you really like. Yeah, there's um, so in the B two B world, uh, th there's a couple things that I uh, I think are, are great examples. Um, one which I've seen a number of companies do well, and I mentioned earlier is is using humor at the top of the funnel to, you know, stand down a little bit almost to, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still unexpected with a lot of B2B companies and it can go a long way to again, building a more kind of personal brand with people. And, um, you know, there's, there's a few really quick examples. I know what, one of my favorites from a couple of years ago was really simple, but it just like hit home for me was um, Hootsuite, uh, the social media platform yep. company. Um, they actually did a couple of videos in a short stint that really got my attention. One was um, they were launching a new product and instead of just coming out and saying, here's a new product and here's what it does. Uh, they did a quick video doing a parody of um, Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets skit that he does on his late night show. Yep. And in, in mean tweets, he has celebrities read mean tweets about themselves and it's, it's very comedic. And so in this case, they said, well, as part of the new product, we want to show how we're solving some of the issues people have had in the past. And so they actually had their own employees and their executives read mean social media posts about the previous version of their product that people didn't like. And they did it in a very humorous sort of tone. And even their CEO was standing there reading, you know, 
your interface looks like, and I won't say it, you know, say it again here because they actually yeah. had to bleep it out. And, and it, it created this very comedic sort of position. And it was only the last like 15 seconds of the video where it cut to, and here's what we're doing to solve these issues you've had in the past. And you see these quick hits. And it was just one of those ones where, again, I like it, it uh, quote unquote went viral. I don't like saying that in B2B, but right. it's, um, it's one of those ones that are across their audience. And I talked to them about it. They said it was a huge hit and their customers were sharing it around with others, partly because it just, it really hit home with them. And, and they, they found that humor really worked. And, and it was a fun way to tell that story. Um, another great one, uh, the second one I'll, I'll share is um, uh, one of our customers, uh, Lenovo, their B2B business um, that sells uh, uh, rugged laptops and things into enterprises. Yep. They, um, they found, you know, they, they did this great visual storytelling uh, program where they found one of the big issues um, with, or, or one of the things that their IT people, their audience really liked was sharing stories about others in the office who are like the people who like break things, right? So it's like, oh, you know Chuck, he's that guy who who always drops his laptop and the other IT person's like, oh yes, my, my Chuck is John. He does that all the time, right? They found this sort of fun underground sort of it's thing. Relatable. That was Very relatable. And so they created this whole users happen campaign where they did um, infographics, they did videos about you know, this idea of users happen um, and you as an IT person need to do everything you can to, to, to deal with that. And um, they, they did a series of really fun videos. If you Google Lenovo users happen, you'll find it. And um, the last one they did was actually a, a two and a half minute long rap video that was like a parody for IT people um, called I Fixed It. And it positioned the IT person as the hero in this company. But it's so unexpected where they get up and they actually deliver this whole rap song. Very funny, really well scripted, oh. really well done. And, um, and it was just one of those ones where it was like, again, they, they saw some really great uh, responses from it. And they actually did a version where they did a personalized version where they sent it out to a few hundred thousand people in their own database. And each person got a personalized version of the video where their own name was actually brought into the video or their own company name. And so it was like a double impact where this IT person would get this video and there's like a poster on the wall that says, you know, keep calm, like, and your name. And it was like, wait a minute, that's me. And they literally kind of brought them into the story in a fun way. So again, a couple of great examples there if you, if you sure. those uh you know hootsuite mean tweets or uh lenovo um, users happen you'll you'll find those out there guys yeah it sounds like both, both examples that you just described they, they all kind of they anchored on the principle of kind of borrowing uh, from a complete different domain that is super yep. hot like the tweets uh, yep. and and then exaggerating it in the domain that you're focusing on right kind of almost like a news jacking in a way yep <laughs> you're kind of getting a lot of steam from the hot uh, uh, experience from a different domain and you apply it to your context mm -hmm. and that's how you can create uh, something people already you know familiar with they appreciate it and they can see the value now so this is our fantastic yep. examples that's great uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, kind of uh, before we close, you know, looking ahead, you know, for the future, you know, there's a lot of talk about uh, VR and AR coming uh, around the corner. Where do you see video storytelling uh, transforming in the future? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting, right? And it's, um, I think the short answer is, is I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Um, but the, it's, it, things like VR and AR are, um, I think there's no doubt that they're going to have um, a, a pretty significant impact in what we can do as businesses to engage our audiences in, in new and creative ways. And, and I think it will mani manifest itself very differently for B2C companies versus B2B companies. Um, you know, but I, I think in the, in the long run, there's, um, there's a lot of interesting opportunity. I know even in the B2B world, we've been, you know, hearing from clients, you know, doing, uh, doing some interesting things and, and expecting to do some more interesting things, particularly with, with VR. Um, we still have the challenge today of, of course, our audience has to be equipped to, to handle a VR experience. But even in the lower rung, I would think, are, are you guys doing anything on the 360 video? We do, yeah, yeah. So as a video platform, we support yeah. things like 360 video natively oh, within cool. the platform, and um, we are finding that in in the B two B world, what we're starting to see is using that for again sharing, um, you know, experiential um, uh, kind of creative experiences around perhaps live events that they're doing or other things like that. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. It's very early, and I, yep. I, I still haven't seen those use cases that are like, ah, oh, that's it. That's going to like drive the business. Yeah. Um, 
but I think it's it's like anything, right? It's in the early days where we're tinkering with it and kind of learning how it works and and uh, you know what the opportunity might be around it. Um, but I think merging those, uh, you know, VR 360, those kinds of things, we um, we're at least starting to get the creative juices going. And I'd say for most companies, you know, it's good to start learning about it. Don't feel like you have to jump on the bandwagon quite yet, um, but let it start to fuel some ideas about how might you tell stories to your audience in different ways what kind of creative expression will this give you the opportunity to exploit um, and perhaps the last point here is um, looking ahead what types of talent and people do you need in your business and mm -hmm. back to the point earlier of becoming a media company like we've, yeah. we've been saying this for years as well is every company you know whether you're b2b b2c financial services gaming yeah. i don't care has to start thinking and acting like a media company yeah. and um, and a lot of these things are, are part of that so what kind of talent what kind of people are you going to need um, in the next you know today or, or in the next couple of years um, that are going to help fuel that and and perhaps and i hate to say this but reduce your dependency on agencies to become a much more creative house yourself yeah and i'm sure there's it's going to be it's kind of an interesting transition for you know we, there's a lot of talk about the journalism kind of a, on the, the decline so i can definitely see a whole new future for journalists absolutely the marketing side just creating amazing content and stories because they have the talents <laughs> yep yeah, the in-house, the journalists, the creative directors, right? Video producers. I think yeah. there is. We've we've seen a a huge trend over the last couple of years of that stuff coming in-house in more progressive companies, and um, and I, I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of people because mm -hmm. you know the the val of being able to do that within a company, and you know be able to focus on a specific you know line of business and, and get really deep in it. I think is a great opportunity for a lot of people where you can really exercise your traditional journalistic skills, your creative skills. Yeah. Um, and rather than doing a lot of breadth of things, you can go really deep on, you know, a, a very specific narrative and do some really creative things. So, so I, I hope to see that a big part of the, the future of, of, of business. No, so this has been a fantastic uh, conversation. I really enjoyed it. So if we want to summarize, uh, what would you say, like the top three simple tips you can give uh, marketers to get started uh, on the high for 2018? Yeah, I I think in the, uh, so I'll keep it to the B2B world, yeah. um, but it's probably applicable to anybody. I think first is, you know, think about, obviously understand what narrative or story you're trying to build and, and be explicitly thoughtful about where and how video can help drive that narrative forward. Don't just wait until the end to say, oh yeah, video could help there. Um, be explicit about that and think about, you know, where, where it can help um, tell your story. Um, I think secondly, um, you know, if you're not doing so already, uh, start trying to do some video production in-house. If you're entirely dependent on third-party agencies and freelancers, it's very difficult to scale. Mm -hmm. um, maybe ask around your office. There's a good chance there are people who, you know, do some video editing on the side and people who have decent cameras that you can start to get going. So I think, you know, understand where it fits. Um, start to build up your internal muscle with respect to creating video content. Yep. Uh, and then I think finally, you know, start to build out a proactive plan for where it fits in your buyer's journey. And so, you know, maybe 12 months from now, you're not looking back and saying, oh, I wish we had done this or that. Um, you know, build a roadmap and, uh, and, and be serious about it. And don't, uh, you know, don't think video will just happen because it happens. You, you have to be explicit about it. You got to think about it and build up the skills. So to summarize all of that, just do it. Just, yeah. Awesome, great stuff. So <clears throat> how can uh, our viewers uh, contact you if they wanna ask more questions and be in touch? Yeah, um, so you can of course find me on LinkedIn. I'm at Tyler Lassard. Um, mm -hmm. You can find me on Twitter as well, at Tyler Lassard, and uh, check out vidyard.com. And um, you know, feel free to browse around on there. I think on our website, you know, not only is there great information about, of course, what we do, um, but I think there's a lot of good examples for how we do video on our own website, on our blog, things like Chalk Talk. So feel free to snoop around on there to see some of the things that our own marketing team here does as an example. And of course, feel free to sign up for our newsletters and such to, to see all the other kinds of videos we share out there. Um, so I think those are the best ways. And uh, again, hopefully there's some inspiration for all of you. Thank you so much, Tyler. It's been a fantastic uh, conversation and I wish you a fantastic 2018. Thank and, you, you know, let's uh, get control of our narrative. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate well, it. And I uh, really enjoyed it. And, and all the best to your 2018 as well. Thank you. Visual storytelling today is recorded in Miami, Florida. 
The show is published exclusively by Visual Storytelling Institute. Learn more at visualstorytell.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on the iTunes Store. Until next time, don't let your big story wait to be told. Thank you.